Welcome to our section on fundamental analysis. This is a critical component in your stocks and options education and I hope to be able to show you some new ideas and most of all make this very accessible to uh, everyone who is interested in the stock and options market. So I've, I've written down a few of these little uh, abbreviations, quick ratio, PEG, PE, EBITDA, have you ever heard that before? Current ROA, debt to equity, etc. These are all standard financial measures and oftentimes you will see uh, information companies, educators, analysts, etc. rely on a series of these plus many, many others. I'll give you a couple of examples. I know of a company that actually requires you to weed through 13 different ratios and measures before the stock even qualifies to be uh, taken for further analysis into the financial statements. There was a recent bestseller, in fact, uh, a book, uh, where the author says that you have to accurately push your analysis, so project stock prices 10 years in the future and then discount those uh, prices backwards in time using a discount rate to figure out whether the stock is fundamentally a good deal or fundamentally overpriced. The, what's happening here uh, is that anytime you see things like that and other companies use proprietary measures or subjective measures, but that what they're trying to do is to make it very complicated because if you have to approach the priests of the fundamental temple to get access to the market gods, then they are providing value. Well, fundamental analysis does have value. This is a degree in accounting. However, you don't have to have one of these to understand this. It's actually quite accessible, it's extremely valuable, and you don't need to get hung up in all of this kind of stuff to understand what it is. And in fact, if anything, these are significant distractions from what's really happening. So as far as fundamental analysis goes, let's boil this down to a couple of key concepts and one specific ratio to illustrate our point. That way we can get rid of a little of this and improve on this part of fundamental analysis. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not suggesting that fundamental analysis, even complicated fundamental analysis, isn't valuable. In fact, it's quite valuable. It's one of the most valuable things you can learn, master, and then apply in the market. The problem is, is that it's very easy, like any form of analysis in the market, including technical analysis or relative strength analysis, etc., it can be overcomplicated to the extreme and become next to meaningless and largely just inaccessible to normal traders who probably have a profession outside the market and are trying to understand how they can earn a return, improve their savings, whatever it is, whatever their investment objective is. So let's break this down and we're going to concentrate our fundamental analysis on basically one measure. This is what it's called. It's called ROE. Now, ROE is one financial ratio. It does not account for stock price, and I, uh, I recommend ROE as the financial measure that you understand. Be part of the reason that I recommend it is because it ignores price. What ROE means is it's return on equity, or owner's equity. So this is your uh, uh, net assets number, if you will. So the, the, what are we concerned about as shareholders? Well, as shareholders, we are. We're the owners here. We're the owners. We're the ones who are interested in this. This is revenue and profits. So, and the ratio of that to that ownership is obviously very uh, critical. This is one of those measures that are kind of the the parent ratio, if you will. Uh, one way to look at uh, what is ROE is it's, it is specifically defined as net income. So what did you make? What were your profits uh, over owner's equity? That equals ROE. Now, you could also look at that as uh, it is net income. So what did you make over net assets? That means it's your assets minus your liabilities. So what kind of information are we getting here? We're getting information about leverage. We're getting information about debt. We're getting information about revenue, profits, and margin. So you can see that there is a lot of information that's being flowing 
into this particular measure and it's giving us a very clean view of what's going on with this particular company. There's actually a popular uh, way to look at this. So if you, when you go to business school, for example, uh, uh, one of the things that they'll talk to you about is the DuPont ratio or the DuPont calculation. And what that is, is it looks at ROE and it's, it's, it's a way to prove why ROE is so effective. So let me show you how this works. It basically states that ROE equals net income over sales so you can see we're wrapping in more information here, times sales over assets. So how efficiently are we using our assets to create sales? Very important information. Times assets over equity. So how well are those assets turning into value for the shareholders, the owners of the company. All of this information, now you, if you really want to memorize this and teach it to someone else, it's probably not such a bad idea. It will really help you understand how financial performance around the company's financial statements flows through to uh, performance within the market. But more, the, the takeaway that I want you to, to walk away from this information is, you're getting an encapsulated view of basically the company's activity. We know what their assets are doing. We know what leverage is like. We know what sales is like. We know how they're able to turn those sales into profitability. We know how they're returning value to the shareholders, which ultimately is something that we're very concerned about. Now, there are a couple of open-ended questions, but before we get to those, uh, let me give you a specific example. Uh, re return on equity, just like any other financial measure, is a relative measure. That means that it has to have context. You can't take one company, develop its financial performance, whether it's ROE or whether it's another 30 different ratios that you're combining together in some sort of elaborate score, and then say, this equals good. Because it really depends on, well, what does that mean? Is, it in, is this a consulting firm? Because that's going to mess with your assets. Is it an oil refinery? Because that's, they, they have a completely different asset structure. But it does matter quite a bit. And there are answers to, is it good? Is it bad? What should I be looking for? Let me give you a specific example. Now, it's Friday as I'm filming this. So, of course, my mind is turning towards recreation, motorcycles, uh, well, what about that industry group? Well, let, let's take a look at it, for example. So here's a stock, this is HOG, Harley Davidson. And I'm, I'm showing this from basically the beginning of the bull market in 2003 to current prices. And you'll notice, so here's its performance. Here's how much it has gained in value. It's been reasonably volatile. Here's how much it's gained in value, uh, or not gained in value, as the case may be. Now, here's its ROE number. Now, it doesn't, doesn't look too bad, does it? I mean, that's nothing to be necessarily ashamed of. But is it good? Is it bad? It has no context. It's all by itself. This is the problem with fundamental analysis oftentimes, is that you have to understand, well, where is it relative to the rest of its industry group, its competitors, uh, and, a, and a number of other factors. Now, these are easy to start to solve for, and we're going to be tackling these in the next couple of presentations. Let's compare this stock, however, with another one. So this is Polaris. Now, again, I'm showing this. It's in the same industry group. I'm showing the chart from basically the beginning of the bull market. So again, we had plenty of volatility. And here's its return on equity number. So obviously, a much stronger return on equity than with HOG. And what do you know? Here's its actual return in dollars for over that same period. So this is one of those ways in which we start to isolate companies that are likely to perform the best out of a specific industry group. But we can even start to do some things around uh, searching for stocks that have ROE numbers that make sense that this would be a reasonable stock to add to a diversified portfolio. So searching for those stocks, implementing them into a portfolio, and beginning to move ROE, or fundamental analysis, if you will, from the theoretical into the practical is what we're going to be spending uh, our time on over the next couple of lessons.